Hi there. This is going to be a little bit different video than normal. I'm doing a little bit of an update of where I am at personally at the moment. This is um, the background when I do my sessions. It has that calming effect on people and, and myself. So over the years, through all these different mentors and trainers, what happens is you just get insights and ideas from the many different people and then you share it. I've always been about sharing my journey. And so I'm about to share where my journey's at right now. And where it's at is I've started to become a little bit disconnected from the personal development industry. Like it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Which, which is all good and well. It's not about the money, but it's like, is it achieving the freedom that people are searching for? And for me personally, what was happening is, yes, I was changing and I was growing and I'm getting better and my life's getting better. But it's almost like it was feeding into that not enough, but there's more to be done, which which isn't, which isn't quite so bad. But what I've been going through probably last couple of years especially, but, but maybe a bit longer than that, is that I remember I, I found a Nautica shell on the beach, a paper Nautica shell. If you look it up, it is this beautiful, thin, like very paper thin shell. How it can survive in the ocean is beyond me, but how it can then be washed up on, onto the shore and still um, be intact was remarkable. It did have a, a little bit out of it, but it was mainly intact. So I looked up um, different meanings of the Nautica shell. I may even be saying it wrong, but I looked up the meaning and it was a definition of how it survives in the ocean and how it survives in the ocean being so fragile is that when there's when there's um, uh, reefs and and things going on, it will puff itself up and it will float across the chaos. So. I likened it to my life. It's like that's where we need to get to. It's not about we have to keep tapping for the rest of our life. Yes, we have to evolve and we have to learn and we have to grow, but not in the struggle, not in the challenge of it. So what that means for me is puffing up like the Nautica shell. How do we do that? Well, what I've noticed recently, and it goes back probably a few months ago now. I got ill, so I got um, some sort of bug, whatever. But that's very unusual for me because I walk around saying I don't do sick. I don't do sick. I don't do sick for many different reasons. And what I, well, the epiphany I had within that, that uh, sickness due to a beautiful friend who was guiding me and we had this appointment and I didn't cancel. And during the, the appointment, I was like, oh, I should have just cancelled. And the person responded with, I love you in every season, Pam. This was a very interesting statement to me. So we ended the call and I pondered on this, this statement and what I realised is I didn't love myself when I was sick. I was frustrated. I was annoyed. There was things I wanted to get done. There was things I needed to do. And I didn't like it that I was sick. So then that started a whole new process of loving myself because it's all about loving ourselves. I've heard it for years. I mean, I read the Louise Hayes Love Yourself, Heal Your Life book back in the 90s. I think it was the late 80s, 90s. I knew it was the answer. 
But no one really explains what loving yourself means. I've felt anyway at many, you know, there's, there's, okay, I can love myself here and I can love myself here and I can love myself here and I can do it in many different ways, like feeding myself beautiful food and exercising and moving my body and swimming in the ocean. All, all of that is loving myself for me. But, yeah, when I was sick, it was like not that I did anything, you know, I didn't force myself to do anything, but I just wasn't giving myself that loving, nurturing, caring, being with me while I was sick, not rushing me, not, not, um, not, trying to get over it and, and of course the the moment I stopped and did that and I did it with havening and you know I like to call it Pammy like when when I'm doing it it's that younger version of self that learnt for some reason that she didn't want to be sick that it wasn't okay to be sick um so I was loving her and with that of course I moved through the sickness so fast it was really fast and then I noticed from that moment on, I started noticing these little nano thoughts. So after a meal, or oh, perhaps that was too much or, you know, that. so there weren't even really criticism or harshness, but it was still a judgment of sorts. So then I was, I was doing the same process and just one at a time, whatever come up. And then I got to this most amazing space of being this eternal being, because I do believe we're eternal beings. And I got to this space where it was laughable to not love myself because I'd ate too much at the meal, or it was laughable to love, uh, not love myself because I was sick. It was laughable. Like there was, it, it turned these nano thoughts and they were nano thoughts. So what I mean by that, these aren't perpetual thoughts that I go over and over and think about and contemplate. None of that. They were just in and out, gone in a matter of a, like a flash. But for some reason, this loving myself when I was sick whether it just slowed them all down and I was able to catch them, I'm not, I'm really not sure what happened. But I noticed because I've been sharing, as I do, the moment I experience something, I share it with others. How's this, you know, can you do this? And and what are you noticing? And they're all feeding back that that they're becoming aware of these nano thoughts and and the power of the nano thoughts, meaning the power to keep us stuck where we believe we are. It's just a belief, you know, and that's, you know, way, oh, so much stuff around beliefs. So much stuff around beliefs is entering my business and working with people around their beliefs. So anyway, so back to basically the more I've done that and the more I've done the beliefs and the more I'm incorporating different modalities and different practices from everything I've learned and more that I'm learning, I realized that I'm actually redefining my business. <laughs> I don't even really know what that means. But for me, what it means is this, this pause that I've deliberately been taking has been very beneficial, very beneficial to me, to the people I'm working with. The results are astounding. Like I'm really excited about moving forward with this in a new way. Um, there's kind of this, you know, to me, the, it's about ending the healing journey. Now, that doesn't mean we can't learn and grow and evolve and awaken all of them wonderful things that we as, as humans beings having this experience love to do. It's none of that. But it's the Nordica shell. So there's chaos happening. And my past thinking has created some chaos 
for me at present. That's wonderful. It's it's like I'm facing it with an excitement. What am I to learn here? And I'm the nautica shell doing what needs to be done, but the nautica shell just floating above the chaos, observing the chaos that my past thoughts have created in my now reality. But excited about my future because what I'm creating here now, I can't wait to experience and to live and to share. It's it's just so exciting. So, yes, this is playing out. And that sometimes there's things in reality that want to, you know, like, like, hang on a minute, this has got to be dealt with. Hang on a minute. But it's just not, I'm just not hooked into it. I'm not attached to it. I'm not, I don't know, and it is, I've never experienced it in my whole journey. But the journey's over for me. I have arrived. Now, as I said, I know there will be more learnings for me that I'm so excited to embrace. There'll be, there'll be more things that, that um, I need to learn, that I need to experience, That, but I'm done with the healing journey. So what that means is as much as I can do it in in uh, excitement, in love, in joy, in acceptance, in in um in that just embracing the infinite being that I am, like and creating everything I desire, everything I desire. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, energetically. I do believe in frequency healing. I've been doing frequency healing for a long time. And I think there's more of that coming. What, what's happening is the years of this personal development, it obviously needed to happen or uh, it wouldn't have happened. You know, if it's here, it's meant to happen. But I think it's now time to stand on the shoulders of all those gone before us, all of those gone before us, because they did the hard yards. They made it possible for us. And I made it possible for those coming that are still coming into, um, I don't want to call it the healing journey, still coming into the awakening, the the awareness, the um, the clearing, definitely. The clearing, definitely. But it doesn't have to be this years of struggle, these years of, of work. And I know myself personally, I have did some work. I had some stuff going on, but I have worked and worked and worked and but I think I got stuck in that that working and wanting to get every trauma resolved, wanting to get every programming, every pattern, every um, every behaviour. And now I realise I was wanting to get it all done before I could truly love every aspect of myself when now we don't have to do that. We just need to get to the point where we're constantly not being pulled down by the chaos and we can float across, creating, no matter what's happening here, we're creating what it is that we desire to be experiencing in life. So that's definitely definitely where my business is heading it's always I always share where I am at and this chapter is no different this is exactly where I'm at and this is exactly what I'm going to be sharing to 
like I don't even know the words for it. It's that it's that new, it's that fresh, it's that exciting. I don't have the words yet. And there's this whole other, you know, putting all of these different techniques together that I've learned. There was a part of me that wanted to wait. I wanted to wait until I had become the person that would bring this to the world. And I've realised, no, I will become the person by the end of it who has brought this to the world. Oh, my goodness, my golly, my gosh. Very exciting times. But And, and the clients that I'm now attracting, you know, you, know, you put it out to God and, and, and you just put it out there like I want people that are ready to end their healing journey and, and to do, you know, the nautical shell. We understand that there's more learning, that there's more growing, that there's more evolving, but we're going to do it in love and joy and excitement. So, and of course, that's the, that's the clientele that I'm attracting. They've been doing the work for so long. They've been clearing and cleansing and, but they just can't seem to, to, to break the cycle of getting hooked in to the chaos. So, that's where I'm at. I just wanted to share it. It is in the middle of winter down here in Victoria, Australia, where I live. Hence the scarf. Um, hence the jump up. But I am still swimming in the ocean and I am still loving, loving it. Absolutely loving it. I'll give you an update again real soon. Bye.